Hello, everyone. My name is Lisa, and I work on the learning team at the Royal Alberta Museum. I am joined today by educator Nicole Weasel Traveler. Hi, Nicole. Hi. I am so happy to have Nicole joining me today because we are focusing on a very important topic, something that we hope to help teachers and families and the children that are involved as well to learn a bit more about a very important day, which is on Wednesday, September 30th, and that is Orange Shirt Day. So Nicole, as educators, it's so important that we are sharing important information about our history, about our peoples. And this is one of those days that the conversations are often very difficult um, they're delicate, but they're so necessary to have. And I just, I want to thank you so much again for joining me and sharing your experiences with this day. And I'd like to first start off by asking you, you know, what are some of the approaches you take to Orange Shirt Day when you are working with your students? And why is it, in, why is it so important that we talk about this day, that we share information? You know, not just for our young generation, but really for everyone. So, Orange started with um, Phyllis Webstad. She told a story about when she was a child and she wore an orange shirt on the first day of school um, at a residential school and how it was taken from her. So now the orange shirt represents her experience and the experience of all survivors and their families of residential schools. So um, residential schools are part of Canadian history, not just Indigenous history, it's Canadian history. We all live with that and the legacy that's happened since. Um, Sir John A. Macdonald was the leader at the time when residential schools first started. And then the last residential school did not close until 1996. So this is not way in the past, it's actually um, affecting us today and knowing that the last residential school only closed in 1996 makes this still current and um, people in our communities need to learn about this because of the effects that's happened since the legacy the people that need to heal and the trauma that's happened absolutely and i i think even just that that statement about residential schools not being officially closed until 1996 that is often a fact, in my experience, that people don't know about, that they think this is um, something of a, of a far distant past, when really it's, it's very much part of our present day and the generations that are, continue to be affected. Thank you for sharing that. And again, you know, as we focus on this day and we bring awareness to these discussions, what are some things that you are doing with your own students to help these discussions and, and to help bring awareness? So um, there are lots of beautiful resources out in um, the world right now <laughs> through storybooks. I like teaching through literacy and we have a lot of storybooks. Um, two of the books that I like to read are based on I have them, she, she, oh, good. and Shinshi's Canoe. And it's about a girl, this one is about a girl leaving to go to residential school and how her and her family get ready to, um, for her to leave in the fall. And then this is like the sequel of her little brother attending residential school with her maybe a few, few years later. Okay. And, um, it's a very gentle introduction to residential school for children and how um, the experience was for these two young children in these books. They're by um, Nicola I. Campbell from BC. Very beautiful stories. And again, through storybooks, I like to teach. Um, and then I also do an Orange Shirt Day poster with my students. So I have a poster and they um, either write a message to residential school survivors to talk about resiliency or to talk about um, how proud they are or that you're loved or that we understand what you went through or pictures. Some of the younger students just like to put pictures of um, healing and health, happy faces, hearts. And then the older students 
will sometimes write a full letter on here or talk about how residential schools affected them and their family. Because a lot of Indigenous students today are um, maybe one generation or maybe two or three generations out of residential school, but it's still affecting them. I also teach my students that us as Indigenous people, we have a belief that we're affecting the next seven generations into the future. And we're healing from the seven generations behind us. And in this moment in our life right now, we can do so much to heal. And you look at global warming, for example, the seven generations before us never really took that into consideration and we're dealing with it and our children for seven generations will deal with those effects. So again, residential school is something like that. Um, we have to heal, it's our responsibility to heal in this time so that the next seven generations can be healthier. Oh, and that, that is an extremely helpful message to carry forward and again to share with others and let them know that perspective. Thank you for sharing that. You know, again, it's these types of messages and, you know, even when you were showing that activity there with the orange shirt, you know, that's something that you know that students are able to do individually they're also able to do that at home if they're if they're doing online learning right now and still share that they are taking part and they're participating you know there really is a message right now with having covid-19 and having this pandemic you know this this brings orange shirt day to to another level as well would you agree with that statement yes because of covid um we're all dealing from the trauma of that and the effects of that and the second wave of it coming. So we were all in this heightened state of stress and um, especially the children. And so um, artwork is a great way to have children express their feelings. And because reading some of these stories, um, they are very sad. And when I teach, I always say, well, you know what? Um, my mom and my dad and my grandparents and my great grandparents went through this experience but they survived it, they have the strength, they taught me how to be strong. And so I'm always giving that message to my students that you know, we have the resiliency, we have the strength to survive this. And indigenous people, generations of us have. And I pass that resiliency on to my students. And so the artwork is a great way for them to express how they feel about residential school and just how they're feeling in general. So always trying to take that creative route with them and, um, asking them to draw or color or write a poem about um, the experience or how they felt after I read the book to them. Yeah. Absolutely. Again, especially through story, it's I feel that children and, and really anyone is able to find themselves in these stories and put themselves into that mindset of empathy. And that's it. That's another, you know, something that we want to teach our younger generations that we want to keep moving forward is the need for empathy and for understanding and for, you know, taking the time to learn more, to not just take something at face value, but to go a step further and to really try and understand it more deeply. And again, through storytelling, through art, through meaningful discussion, um, that that can happen. Are there any you know, final words that you have, any supports that you would like to share with teachers, families, with the students themselves as they think about Orange Shirt Day and really the times that we're all facing right now during the pandemic? Yes, I think we need to recognize and honor the healing and the resiliency that's happened so far with residential school survivors and their families. And the symbol of the orange shirt, you know, for them and their families to say, you know, we support you. We're beginning to understand your narrative and what happened. Um, and that we, um, we celebrate that because a lot of people that have survived, like my parents and my grandparents and my great grandparents, who all survived residential school, they left um, broken but not defeated. And it was their connection to the culture and the land and the language that um, they passed on to us and I'll pass, I'll keep passing it on for generations. And that's our ability to heal. That's what we use to heal. And so us 
as Canadians, us as Indigenous people, we need to embrace the healing that's happening because it will take a while and we, um, and it's in our children. Our children are our leaders, so we need to be able to support them in their healing as well. Oh, I absolutely. And again, just sharing, sharing these stories, sharing the successes as well as the history that is, is so difficult to talk about. Thank you yeah. so much, Nicole. And again, for anyone who is looking for other resources that they can use on this day to just keep the conversation going. Um, the Truth and Reconciliation Council, on their website, they have a full day of programming, of events that are happening virtually. So if you do look up their website, um, they will have some, some really helpful information to share. Um, there is also going to be um, some posts and resources shared from the Royal Alberta Museum. Uh, so again, just giving some more resources for people to use as needed. And also uh, on Wednesday, September 30th, the museum, the Royal Alberta Museum will also be offering some um, videos for people to uh, help their learning and also sharing um, just a bit more information on site as well. So we really look forward to continuing this conversation. And Nicole, I just, I can't thank you enough for joining me today and for sharing your knowledge and your experiences. It's, it's truly amazing and I'm so fortunate to have you as someone I can speak to and, and share our education journey with. So thank you so much. It's, it's been an honor. Thank you, Lisa.